Hello, this is Reza Rat from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is Delta Lake, Delta, Delta Lake table structure, how it works, how it stores the lake house table data, the benefits that it provides, how you can work with it to uh, get some abilities such as time travel and uh, some internals about Delta Lake tables. Let's go and check it out. Okay, let's start with what is Delta Lake. Now in the world of um, Microsoft Fabric, Lake House or Data Lake in general, there are lots of terminologies that looks the same. You have like Data Lake, you have Lake House, uh, Delta Lake, you have um, One Lake. It's a lot of different things that might sound the same, but uh, I'm not going to talk about all of those. In this video, I'm going to talk about Delta Lake. What is a Delta Lake? It's a standard uh, f um, open source format of storing data specifically related to Lake House. It's not uh, specific to Microsoft. Uh, other vendors are also using it. Uh, it's one of the uh, formats that is used and some uh, compute such as Spark, Hive, um, some different computes are using it. And because Fabric is using Spark, um, so Fabric has decided to use the same format. It's a uh, format or let's say it's a structure in that way the data is stored. Um, so it's, it's not an object by itself. Uh, the object would be table or would be the file or would be the lake house. Delta Lake is the structure or the format that this uh, data of that table is stored. Um, so before looking at what that structure looks like, let's see what is the benefits of the, uh, Delta Lake. So Delta Lake is providing uh, quite a few different benefits. One of them is uh, ability to do atomic uh, transaction style things that we do in a database. We call it ACID, uh, which is uh, for transactions we apply on, on the database um, that would also uh, that would ensure the, uh, the, qu um, uh, the quality of the data uh, in terms of like the read and write wouldn't impact each other, things like that, transaction level things happening, normal things that we do in a database. On the other hand side, it also provides features such as time travel and versioning, which means, for example, at, if I want to look at my data at a specific point of time, like last year, 15th of April, I want to see what this table's data look like. This provides me that. In addition to that, it provides uh, auditing experience because it keeps all the log history of what has been changed at what time. So I can actually go and uh, get that information uh, and many other things. For example, it helps me to do uh, my normal updates or deletes on the data, things such as, for example, I want to do uh, slowly changing dimension or type 2 or for example inferred dimension member things that you usually do in a, a warehouse or lake house situation you can do that using this structure of course it has many other benefits but these are a few of those benefits so what does the structure look like the structure of the file is like this so if you have a table there would be a folder for that table of course uh, whatever the name of that table is that table um, that folder would then include a bunch of files these would be some parquet files plus a, a folder uh, called underscore delta underscore log in that folder we would have log files in a json format like this uh, and um, like how many park files you have or how many JSON files you have, that would be decided by the lake house system to, to generate those as you make changes and as you proceed with the, um, uh, with the updates on your lake house table. Uh, now I'm going to show you this structure in uh, my environment. So what I have here is I installed this um, one lake file Explorer in uh, Windows. You can actually download and install it for free. Uh, it's a quite good thing because once you download it, then one lake would appear like uh, like a OneDrive for you. You can see all your lake house, warehouses, objects here. So I'm looking at one of my lake house. This is the lake house. In that lake house, I have tables and files. So I'll go under the tables. And the fact internet sales table is the one that I'm looking at. So this table, uh, and now we are looking at the same structure I just mentioned. So this structure basically means that I have these parquet files in here. So you see these parquet files. 
and then I have the Delta log folder. Under that, I might have some other folders. That's not the important piece. I mean, they are also important, but the most important part is these JSON files. And these JSON files would actually keep the um, keep the um, changes, uh, whereas the uh, Parquet files would keep the actual data. Um, the same structure, you can see that when you are looking at the lake house in the lake house uh, explorer. So if I look at the lake house in this view, um, when I'm looking at the lake house, when I'm looking at the tables of that lake house, I would have this option to go and say view files. Uh, and then this would, uh, then this would literally bring the same file structures. I have parquet files, I have the delta log folder and JSON files underneath. By default, when you click on this, this would show you the tables, but uh, the, the tables data. But when you click on view files, you'll see the files. So uh, before talking more about that, let me also explain this. So we talked about um, the delta lake structure being a structure, meaning a folder, a bunch of parquet files, a delta log folder, and under that some JSON files. Uh, but what Parquet is then is the parquet the same as the as the delta? Sometimes I get this question like delta parquet they are the same or they are replacing each other. If I store my data, is it going to be stored as parquet format or delta? Which one is better? Uh, now these two are totally two different things. Uh, parquet is a format that we store the data, so parquet files are actually keeping the data. Delta Lake is not a file. Delta Lake is a structure, a framework, a storage layer that would decide how these files are placed. For example, for this table, you would have these Parquet files plus that Delta Log um, folder plus the JSON files, right? So Parquet files are part of the Delta Lake, but they are not necessarily the same. Uh, so talking about Parquet, what is Parquet and what is the benefit of that? So Parquet is a format that we store data. For example, you can store your data in a CSV format if you want uh, when you store it as a file. Uh, CSV format, however, is more readable, human readable. You can open it in Notepad, read it, or you open it in Excel. It's easily readable. Um, and they are not stored efficiently. Whereas Parquet files, they are also storing the data, but they are storing it in a column store method, which would make it much more efficient. The size of the files would be significantly smaller. And the analytics, any analytics we do on that file would be uh, super fast. Um, querying the data from a file as, such as Parquet is far faster than doing it in a CSV file. So in general, uh, they provide a better um, read access through the file, which is much faster. And they also uh, store it more efficient, which makes the files much smaller. So that is why a lot of um, big data or lake house technologies are using Parquet files as the format that they store the data. Same is here with the lake house uh, in Microsoft Fabric. So the files are actually stored. Uh, the data is actual, uh, actually stored in Parquet format. You can't read it, but the Apache Spark uh, compute engine behind the scene can read it. Okay, now how these uh, files or how a Delta Lake structure is created. There are two ways that this can be created. One way is basically whenever you create a table in here that would, um, and this table might be created just blank or you might create it using any of these methods that you can uh, get data. Uh, this table would be a Delta Lake table or you can use a Python code that you can create it. And I have the Python code in the blog down in the description below. Now I'm not going to show you the Python code to create it. Uh, what I'm going to show you is some other examples of this. So let's say I have this table with those Parquet files that you saw uh, with some of the um, with some of the um, file structure. I want to see how a change can happen. So I have a notebook here considering this is a lake house. And um, one of the ways that I can make change is a code in notebook. So this is a SQL code that you can see. I'll zoom in a little bit. So this is a SQL code uh, that I'm running in a notebook and it is connected to the same lake house. And this is basically just updating the fact sales table, making the sales amount this much for any records that their date is 1st of July. 2008, and that apparently updated 79 records. I'm not going to run it again. I already run that. 
so 79 records are updated using this. Uh, what would be the impact of such thing in the structure of the file? So in the structure of the file, um, so I can go to, for example, the fact internet sales table and looking at the looking at the fact internet sales, let's say I want to see uh, the files. So looking at the files. And uh, now I'll sort it based on date modified and you see that there are some parquet files. So I just ran it um, before this video. So there is a parquet file created at this uh, at this date, right? I don't need to know uh, or understand how the structure of that file is. What I'm uh, interested to show you is the delta log table. In the delta log table, I also have some other, um, some things, but one of them is a JSON file, again created in the same time frame. So what I'm going to do is just to open that JSON file, uh, and the JSON file keeps the changes. So here you can see that what happened is actually there is one of the Parquet files that is removed, another Parquet file is added. So the changes are happening in the data uh, and, and the data is stored in Parquet files. The JSON file is keeping the information about what Parquet files to look at or what Parquet files not to look at. I don't need to understand these structure, but the lake house from this, uh, or let's say Spark engine behind the scene, understands it. And based on that, it refers to the right data. Uh, now, in addition to that, I can do a lot of uh, other things in my notebook as well, not just creating this. I can go to my notebook, for example, here. Um, I have uh, another piece of code that uh, if I run it, and this is a simple code using describe uh, keyword. If you run it and say describe history for this table, what it does, it actually shows you the history of what has been uh, the changes on this table and you see there's an update command uh, as the latest change happened as the operation. Now I have done some other optimization before this as well. So you see vacuum start and optimize things like that. But don't worry about it. Uh, what this would do is it would give you those information. And of course, you can go further and do a really uh, extensive log. Another example I want to show you is how to do time travel. And it is quite simple to do it. So I have a piece of Spark code that actually reads that Delta format. And only with this piece of code here beside it, I'm actually telling which part of the data I'm getting. For example, I'm saying that, well, read this table, but as of 28th of April, not as of now, which is 30th of April. And that, and that is how I time travel. So I get that, I store it in a variable uh, or a data frame, we call it in Python. I show that data frame and I show a current version without that timestamp and show that as well. So these two are the two versions that I have here. There is one which is for the uh, for the old version and you see the sales amount values over there and then there is one which is for the newer version uh, and I can see the sales amount in here as well and if you look at these the two sales amounts are somehow different which is showing me the data as of now the bottom one and the data as of 28th of April before this change uh, the previous one. So quite uh, useful. These are a few examples of what you can do with these Delta Lake tables. But the thing is that you don't really need to work with the actual files. You can do if you want to, but you don't need to. Uh, another question that might come into your mind is that, well, what about optimization? Because these files are getting like updated updates and we would have like more Parquet files, more JSON files things like that, how we can clean up this, how we can do optimization. There are optimization techniques. There are commands such as optimize, vacuum that you can use. Uh, and there are also optimization um, options behind the scenes such as V order and Z order, or we call it Z order in British, uh, whatever you might like. Um, but that is a subject of another video, uh, which I'm going to talk about it uh, later. So stay tuned for that. The good news, however, is that all of those optimizations are happening behind the scene automatically. So you don't need to uh, do anything about it, but knowing it is helpful. So I'll explain it in another video. 
Uh, so in general, um, as a summary, Delta Lake is a format a structure to store data. It's not Microsoft specific. Other um, vendors are also using it. The data is stored as a few different files and folders. One of those files is Parquet files. That is where the actual data is stored. Uh, and uh, this feature provides uh, a lot of capabilities for us doing like normal database operations, asset operations, transactional operations, as well as time travel, as well as auditing the changes. Uh, plus uh, the Parquet files gives us the ability to do um, big data analysis at a super fast uh, speed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, until the next video, bye.